Hi, this is Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home with a certified car nut. Today we're at the 26th Annual Mid-America Ford Performance and Shelby Meet at the Hallett Motor Racing Circuit outside Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is one of the longest running multifaceted events in the country. It has something for everybody. It's got road racing, drag racing, cruises, and an excellent car show. It's just great family fun. This place is teeming with Mustangs, Cobras, even a Pantera or two. Joining me now is Jim Wicks, coordinator and actually founder of this monster event. Well, thank you, Dennis. Uh, we're really happy to have my classic car here with us. Uh, great to be here. Now, when you started this thing, it, it started kind of as a, just a get-together, didn't it? Yes, it did. It was just an idea to uh, let car enthusiasts, uh, particularly the, I was always into the Shelby stuff and the, the get the Shelby owners and the people that uh, were enthusiasts of this kind of car together to have something to do, talk about our cars, share information, and go on from there. But it's grown a heck of a lot since then, hasn't it? Yes, it has. This has absolutely been beyond our wildest dream <laughs> of where any of us ever thought it would go. Well, now, you started out to be pretty much a Shelby-only event, but you've expanded it to anything sporting a Ford badge somewhere, isn't it? Yes, we have. Uh, we've been able to open it up. Uh, it kind of seemed as the uh, Shelby's went up in value, a lot of people quit driving the cars, and and uh, kind of left it with a void of, uh, of, of, I guess you'd say, the collector type of person not wanting to use the car. But we've really had a good turnout and uh, a, a lot of help with the, from people who, car enthusiasts like you and I, wanting to get out and have fun with their cars. Now, Ford's one of the sponsors of this. They're behind this event? Yes, they are. Ford Motor Company uh, has always been a great help to us in, in the production of this, uh, uh, along with the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Uh, we just. We couldn't put on the event without their help. Now, over the four or five days that this thing runs, how many how many cars do you think you'll see overall? We're we're really anticipating having 800 cars oh, here. Man, well, I'm impressed with the uh, the quality of them and the horsepower. I mean, there's some really good sounding cars out there. I can't wait to get out and get around the track a couple times myself. The sights and sounds of the Ford High Performance is something we all enjoy, and, and that's what keeps us going. You bet. Hey, thanks a lot. All right, Dennis. This multifaceted event is tailor made for Ford fans. There were some fantastic cars racing at the Hallett Raceway on open track day. I was invited to take a ride in an original 289 Cobra. How could I refuse? Then someone offered to let me drive his Pantera. <laughs> this really was my day. Let me introduce you to the racing grandma, as she's affectionately called around the track. <laughs> but don't let her looks fool you. She's fast. You know, Mark, walking around here, you see a little bit of everything. But this is killer. This is the real deal here. Absolutely, yes. The real AC Cobra. 1965? They, right, 1965. They uh, built them earlier in 63, went up to the 65, like I say, they went up to 289 and uh -huh. went from there. So this is aluminum body right. and, and this thing was vintage raced almost all its life. Yeah, you know? yeah, from, from 65, it was raced SCCA in 66 and 7, raced uh, USRC and then uh, kind of put it in the Willow Springs there in the 60s and sat there for a while until somebody else got a hold of it and said, hey, let's race it. Now, these wheels make it even more special, right? Right, yeah, this is one of the five that had these wheels. Ferrari was saying, hey, you know, the, you're beating us because of the wheels. You, you're not having problems because they all had the knockoffs on them also, the spline drive. And uh, so they went with this, like you're saying, one with the five with these wheels. So and beat the Ferraris anyway. And beat the Ferraris yeah, anyway, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's great. Well, let's, let's look at that tree right. Oh, yeah, man. Eight Webers sitting there. Now, how many? Yeah. How much gas do you pour in with those things? Uh, about 2,000 CFM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which uh, has about uh, zero miles to the gallon. Yeah, I believe that. And, and pumping out uh, 400. Yeah, about 450. Man, in a car that weighs horse. just over 2,000. Right. Miles. Right. This thing's got to be a, a rocket. Yeah, it uh, it'll hold its own. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, you're involved yeah. there with the uh, the vintage guys here pretty soon. Yeah, there, there'll be probably about a dozen of us out there. The vintage cars and we'll be out there. Two seats, two belts. I got a helmet. Uh, you, can hey, I, maybe, I think uh, uh, we can handle that. Oh, I love that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I can dig that. That'll All right. Fun. After a full day of racing, the Ford Fanatics had just enough time to clean up for a cruise to a local hamburger joint in downtown Tulsa. You know, I gotta tell you, Jen, I'm an absolute sucker for this color. This is Gulfstream Aqua? Gulfstream Aqua. And it's uh, 69 only? Yeah. Wow. Now, you and your husband, you've had this car for just a little while, right? What? Two years. Where'd you get it? Uh, New Mexico. 
flew up there and uh, made a deal and drove her back home. <laughs> you weren't going to let it get away, right? Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. And you drive it? You... Yeah, we drive it about two or three times a week to work or if we go to car shows. That is great. So it's a 351. It's a GT350. 351 uh, Windsor? Yes. And it's got, I mean, this one's kind of decked out. I mean, you got, I see you got air on there. Absolutely. It's a, it's a, an automatic? Yes, it sure is. You know, white interior though. I mean, this, this car is just, I've always loved that interior. Oh, and I've, I have absolutely always loved the rear end of these cars. I mean, it's, it, it's just so cool. The center pipes and everything. And, and I gotta believe you get looks. All the time. Yes, we do. We definitely do. Well, it's cool. I love that car, and you're you're a very lucky person. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. <laughs> you gotta take me for a spin in it later or something. Sure. What do you say? So, Steve, uh, this is a '46 pickup. Is it? '46 Ford pickup, four speed. Four speed. Yeah, it's the early uh, early rendition of the three quarter ton. It, okay. The farmers uh, liked it, so get jack it up and uh, put a cat head on the wheel oh. to run their balers and farming. So I love the, the, the fenders on it. I mean, it's got, you know, almost a hot rod looking fender going there. <laughs> well, it's a performance Ford, sure. Yeah, you know. and the, there's some metal in those things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that weighs what a Honda Civic weighs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Good running boys. Now, you restored this, is that right? Or had it restored? Well, when you pay for it, you, you get claim, to, yeah, you right, right. It, <laughs> it sure is pretty. Was there much rust in it? or? No, really? no, it's, no, it was really in good shape. Uh, it's a pretty it truck. A, it's a Kansas truck, and um, the actual mileage on it is 60 some odd, 68,000. Well, that's something. cool. I'm really glad you brought it out to the cruise. Yeah, it's uh, my son Buck's Cobra back here. He, yeah. he insisted I come down and well, get mingle in with the Cobras. Good, <laughs> good that you listen to your son. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Steve. Okay, Dennis. She's beauty, thanks. beauty. In 1970, young drivers rushed to the Dodge dealerships to order the new Challenger. Dodge designers had fun adding hood scoops, hood pins, blackout paint, decals, and some very wild color choices to these roaring rock and roll street machines. But these babies weren't all show. They had a lot of go, and the big block RTs were particularly quick. We're at historic Allenberry Resort Inn, right near Carlisle, Pennsylvania, with Kent Olson. Kent, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dennis. And this wild, vibrant 70 Challenger RT. This thing really pops, man. It really does, and what's popping out at you is that high-impact paint called Sublime. <laughs> high-impact indeed. Now, this, this was these cartoon colors that Mopar used in the, in the early 70s. There was, there was Sublime, there was... Uh, Curious Yellow, a bunch <laughs> of them. Plum, plum Crazy? Or, yep. Yeah, it, it, great. Now, this is a beautiful car. I've always been a fan of, of the, uh, the Challenger, and, and what I really like, and the RT even sets it off more, is this character line with its stripe that comes down, the body kicks up here and back, and, and, and Mopars always look so muscly. Oh, you know? yeah. The, the byline really accents the car, and then you get the stripe on there. You can really see where the byline is. It makes it look like a nice, streamlined car. It does. Now, I love the luggage rack, too, and I don't know if I've ever seen one before. They're kind of rare. You don't see them on a lot of cars. And uh, it's factory? funny. It's a factory option that this car came with, and it's something like less than 6% of the cars got this option on, the, on their car. Yeah, I think it, it uh, adds a lot of dress up to the back. It's a great looking, great looking rack. Now, yeah. this was also, this came with the uh, Space Saver Spare, right? Right, this car came with a Space Saver Spare. Those things crack me up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Well, it was a small trunk, mm -hmm. so to give you more room, that's what they did. Right, and they had an inflation canister on there, so if you had a flat tire, you could pull the spare out, pop the canister on, and pop up, pop up the tire, and poof, away you go. Yeah, it's more of that cartoon stuff. It's like the, you sure. know, dehydrated, <laughs> just add water. That's right. <laughs> well, I also love your, uh, your license plate. That's pretty cool. Where'd you get that? That's an original issue plate like you would get from the, your DMV uh, when you go re to register your car. Yeah? And that's an original plate, never issued. I found that at a swap meet, and uh, I, I had to buy it the minute I saw it. You're kidding. Yep. That's wonderful. And, and, and what is it, a one uh, Lime Mopar 440? Or, or one Lime 440 or one Lean Mean 440? <laughs> yeah. So many meanings. Right. Well, now, the, the rectangular exhaust tips were RT, right? It was an R, R option on the RT and the dual exhaust and the bright chrome tips. Man, and, and that really sets it off and, again, makes it look different and, 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 and again, pretty tough. Yep. Now, you've restored the entire car, right? The car was all restored. It was a total rotisserie job. Every no nut kidding. And, every nut and bolt was taken off this oh, car. Oh, man. Well, the interior yeah. is beautiful. This, in the RT, you got some, some extra options, some other special stuff, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, mainly, you got all the RTs came standard with the rally dash. Uh -huh. And you had the four uh, pods on the dash that had the tack, the speedometer, clock, and then you had the various uh, fuel and temperature gauges in another one. 
Now it has a, it had the collapsible steering wheel too, right? Yep, this came with the collapsible steering wheel. It was a safety option that they came out with, and the car actually, if you had in a front end collision, the steering column collapsed and uh, protected it from going back into the, pa the driver. And the other thing that's just so Mopar is the pistol grip four speed. Oh yes, that's right. <laughs> all all the four speed cars came with the the pistol grip Hurst four speed. Right from the factory. Right from the factory. Yes. Yeah. Now th this car came standard with a 383. The RTs right? came standard, you got the 383 Magnum. But the upgrade to that was the 440 Magnum. Yep. Which four. is a four barrel car. Yep, 440 Magnum was a four barrel car uh, upgrade. And then the next uh, motor up would be the 446 pack. It's three three deuces. Right. And then uh, on top of that, you've got, well, well of you course, know. Of course, the 426 Hemi, yes. yes. <laughs> but this engine's not too shabby either. No, 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 no. It can no, hold no. its own. <laughs> well, let's open it up. Okay. Oh man, that's beautiful. It's as pretty inside as it is outside. Oh yeah, it really jumps out at you with all the colors in there. And that, that engine bay would have been uh, the way they did it. It wasn't the chassis black, it was the color of the car, right? That's just the way Mopar did them. They painted their engine bays the same color as the body on the car. And man, against that orange engine. That, and that engine is gorgeous. It looks, it actually looks powder coated. Yeah, it looks like it's still wet paint on there. It, uh, <laughs> John Bailo at Muscle Car Restorations did all the paint and body work on this car. And, it's gorgeous. Uh, he does yes. great work. Now, now this is a, you built it pretty stock, right? It's uh, meant to look stock, but perform a little bit better. And uh, I didn't want a motor that I was going to have problems with driving on the street, so I built it pretty much stock. Uh, it idles nice, and it doesn't overheat. Wow! And uh, it does real good on the road. Now, now, what uh, what would that be pushing for horsepower? The stock 440 Magnum. Uh, about 375. Well, like I say, that's respectable. You Very bet. Respectable. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, so it's a you know, it's a lovely day. It sure is. It is. What do you say? Hit the road. Yeah. All hit right. the road. I'll take this pin. Okay. Ooh, good sound. We're locked and loaded. We're ready to go. <laughs> Sublime. <laughs> this just cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that fits great too. Yeah, it's really a comfortable car. Fired up. Okay. So you've always been a Mopar guy? Pretty much always a Mopar guy, and I think my dad was the one that got me into it. He always told me they brought me home from the hospital in an old Mopar. And, uh, <laughs> well, right from the beginning, eh? Yeah, so the body, the body lines and the looks of, of uh, most of the Mopars just really appealed to me, I guess. Well, they were very distinctive. I mean, and especially in the muscle car era, there weren't many cars that looked musclier. Now, how long have you had this car? I've had this car for about six years now. Uh, when I first got it, it was a running, driving car, pretty rough. I drove it for about a year before I started to disassemble and get it ready to, to restore. So it was about a five-year restoration or so? About five years. It's been off the road, so it's a long wait for me. And now that it's finally done, I'm really enjoying it. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes. Oh, yes, that was fun. Very nice, Kent. Very nice. Enjoy that. A sublime experience indeed. Yes. It is beautiful. You know, this is now added to the list of cars I've got to own. Well, you have to find one other than this one to buy. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, what do you think? You know, maybe you can make a deal on this. I mean, I love the color. Let's talk. We'll talk. <laughs>